sometimes I will go by myself to represent you. No. And there are times when I'm going to call on you to come with me. Tomorrow, tomorrow, the only agenda item in front of Dominica is to stop the signing of that contract. The only agenda item. And we have had our experience in the past when we have had to stand together. And instead of standing together, we chose to stand apart only to come back later to blame ourselves for standing apart. Tomorrow is a stand together day. And every man, woman, and child in Dominica who feels any way about the future of their country needs to stand. Because our forefathers didn't fight to abandon slavery to make us free human beings for us to find ourselves in the situation that we find ourselves today and to sit down in the silence of lambs and do nothing about it. A friend of mine told me today it is no longer our jobs to await the sheep. It is our job to await the other lions. We call on the other lions of Dominica tonight. Tomorrow we stand. And tomorrow we say to Roosevelt's carrot, this is not your country, this is our country. You cannot take our money. In violation of the Constitution. In violation of the rule of law. Money from the sale of our passports. Have it holding it under your control with your friend Anthony Hayden. You're doing what you want with the money. You're telling us lies. You're not accounting for it. And with billions of dollars sitting down in overseas accounts under the control of Anthony Hayden and yourself. You are now coming to tell us that without the tender, without the public bid, you are selecting your friend with whom you share the whole unlawful, unconstitutional control of our money in overseas accounts. You are now coming to tell us that that man is going to build an international airport for Dominica. So he will front load the money and then we have to pay him back. The only agreement the people of Dominica can accept tomorrow is an agreement that does not include paying back any money to Montreal Management Company. The only agreement we can approve. Anything else is null, it is void, it is of no effect. If we allow it to be signed. If we allow it to be signed. But it's not for me, it's for the people of Dominica to decide whether the contract tomorrow will be signed or not. It's for you to decide, for all of us together to decide. And if we decide that the agreement should not be signed, then we show up in numbers, not tonight, not like tonight, but we need more people than this. We need more people than this. We need more people to come out of their homes tomorrow afternoon and make their way to the Windsor Park to let Roosevelt's spirit know that you are unhappy, you do not agree with loaning your own money from somebody that has given your money to. You can't do that. You can't do that. No. You can't do that. Let me tell you where you're coming from. 1979, the people of Dominica stoned a government out of office because the people of Dominica were concerned with the conduct of that government. They were, they were worried about legislation that was going to shut up people. They were worried about certain amendments that were proposed they were, they were for the industrial they were relations legislation. They were dissatisfied. And around that time, around that time, the people of Dominica were unhappy with a plan by the then government to use a certain area of land out in the Cabris area as a free port, working with an American investor to 
today we have one man who the Prime Minister has given control of hundreds of millions of dollars belonging to us. And we expect that we can sit by tomorrow and watch that agreement signed. It will be an abdication of our responsibility. As a people, as a civilized people, who understand to pursue it for one and one is two, who know ABCD, who have common sense. And so, we cannot sit down tomorrow and allow that agreement to be signed without any protest action, without collective action by the citizens of this land to say, no, we will not have it. And let me tell you why we have arrived at a very dangerous place in Dominica that requires us to stand up and stand together. Right now, as we speak, there's a man who was born in India in police custody in Dominica. That man is a citizen by investment of Antigua. He's not a citizen by investment of Dominica. He's a citizen by investment of Antigua. And he's not in Indian again. But he gets kidnapped in Antigua and brought into Dominica. And you know what happened in Dominica? The police authority received him from his kidnappers and then turned around and charged him with illegal entry into Dominica. By the way, the police behave. It is clear to all of us who have half a brain that the government and the police in Dominica are involved in the kidnapping of the whole and he came down to Dominica and they received him. The police received him from the city. And I want to ask the police who are here tonight, are you proud of that? The biggest international scandal ever to hit the shores of Dominica has the police complicit in kidnapping a citizen by investment of Antigua in Dominica. And now there's all sorts of things happening in the court. He can get bail, he can't get bail, he is this, he's that tomorrow. All Why sorts of delay going on. Why the government tries to wheel its way out of something. Remember the amount of voices you were hearing when they tried to fire upon Bonnie Manuel Hope up in... Remember the amount of government voices you were hearing? Well done now. Where is the police government now? Where is the government? These are the same people. The same people. The same people who in 2016 harbored a fugitive from justice in Iran by the name of Ali Reza Montfarad. He had been accused of stealing over 3 billion US dollars from the state of Iran, but he was holding a Dominican diplomatic passport. We weren't interested in holding him or charging him with illegal entry or having him in police custody, in hospital or anything of the sort. He was living in luxury in Mont Daniel as a fugitive from just Iran. Today, 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 in a matter that has nothing to do with us, a citizen that has a citizen by investment in Antigua that has nothing to do with us in Dominica. We have decided to get involved. The government of Dominica and the police authority have decided to get involved in hijacking. Charging a man they hijacked with illegal entry to Dominica. It's a government that has no issue at all now in involving itself with crimes against humanity. And as the room said, what people said, and we've been saying, oh my God, for how long now this government has to go? But the government is not going to go if the people don't insist that they go. And that is why, starting tomorrow, 
we must show what joint action means. We must show what collective action means. We must show what joining hearts and joining minds means on an issue of grave national importance to us. Where right now, we find ourselves facing an existentialist threat. And we find ourselves fighting against modern day slavery. There is no other description for that. Years ago when our forefathers were brought across the Middle Passage, somebody was paying money for them. Today we're paying our own money to a man from Lebanon to tell us what to do in our own country. And we sit down and want to do nothing about it. When I open my mouth and when I write on my Facebook page, you have all these Labour Party trolls coming to talk foolishness about who don't want international airport and who are clean. All sorts of non-issues, all sorts of non-issues when the matter before us is our resources and how our resources are going to be used for the benefit of all the people of Dominica. That's why we're about. So tomorrow, tomorrow, I saw an invitation that says, we are officially signing off the agreement with MMCE for the construction of the International Airport. And he said, my friends, International Airport is coming into reality and will create an ocean of opportunities for everyone. International Airport has been coming for 20 years under the Labour Party government. It's not new. They collected half a billion dollars, 500 million dollars to build the airport. And when I asked them what is the balance in the account, they said $269.39. dollars $269.39. That was about $249.69. That was the balance. And then they said, China will build the airport. And then they said, okay, China might take too long. We need to build the airport so we'll use our own money to do it. But guess how it's going to be done? Our money that Hayden is holding overseas is going to be front loaded by Hayden or put forward by Hayden and then you have to pay Hayden back. Bear with me for two minutes. When the contract or the agreement is signed tomorrow, Hayden becomes the man who has cut blush to decide how this airport is going to be built. Because he himself has no company that can build airport. He's going to choose people from outside to come in and build the airport. Which really the government should be opening bids for. Instead of doing that, they pass it to one man so he will decide who he wants. No bid, no tender. So now, he has this contract. We are going to have to pay him for his work in the development and the construction of the international airport. That's going to come from our money which he already has. So when we pay him back, let's say the, the airport costs a billion dollars. From that billion dollars, there is a developer's fee inside there, which is, let's say, maybe 50, 200 million dollars. He'll make that money for itself. And then, we have to pay back the whole billion dollars, which we loan, our money we loan from him. But it's our money that is in his hands, and this guy put it there. Now, this guy has a very interesting relationship with this man. This man came here, Scary lied about the relationship and said the country was broke and so we couldn't afford the money to relocate the Pinisama residents to Bellevue. So he bought the land. He fronted the money to build the land and to develop it and so on. Big fat lie because when they were doing that the year, which was doing that 2016, 2015, thereabout, we made $279 million from citizenship by investment and, and, we spent 117 million, which means we ended that year that strike was claiming over. We ended that year with 179, 162 million dollars in the bank from citizenship by investment. 
But he told us we couldn't afford two million dollars to buy the 44 acres of land for the resettlement of the Pinsala residents. So that lie was the lie he used to set up this corrupt relationship with Hayden, where Hayden will be using our money and clearly he's front loading and paying himself back from citizenship by investment. He is the only one that has a deal to sell citizenships under the housing program, especially creative. Housing is for Dominica, the money is Dominica passport money, the money is supposed to go in the consolidated fund. But as, we, as you will see in the constitution at page 76, that Munsey we added on tonight, that constitution at page seven, at section 76 says monies belonging to Dominica must come into Dominica's consolidated fund. And they are not doing that. The Finance and Administration Act makes the same provision. So they have been unconstitutionally and unlawfully holding all this money outside of Dominica. How much money is it? Well, we estimate that that money now is in the billions of dollars. Let me do a quick calculation for you. All you people did arithmetic in school for the dance. You did. All you people did a little arithmetic, a little mathematics. You did your, your time tables and so on and so on, right? Okay, we'll do a little addition. Government, government sold 15,477 passports in three years ending the 30th of June 2020, 15,477. That means that we should have gotten revenues of $3,500 million. We only got $700 million. So when you take all the $700 from the $3,500, you will get $2,800 million, which is $2.8 billion dollars. 2.8 billion dollars. And from that 2.8 billion dollars, which they have not told us what has happened to that money and we suspect that's the money they are holding. From that 2.8 billion dollars, we estimate they have spent 300 million on housing, on uh, health centers, the Marvel Hospital, and the uh, community centers around Dominica. 200 million from 2.8 billion leaves 2.5 billion dollars that is there belonging to all of us, all of the 70,000 people of Dominica under the control of Anthony Hayden, Roosevelt's current friend. And it is from that money that the airport is going to be developed. So we're not paying it back. And no agreement tomorrow can suggest or put us in a position where we're going to pay it back because we say from now, if they get to sign it, it will be now, it will be void, it will be of no effect. Anthony Hayden formed a company called Mercury Properties. Those of you who are old enough remember years ago when Roosevelt Scarry told the people of Dominica he got a gift of land from Maria Schillingford at Trafalgar because she loved him very much and he was a good prime minister she gave him a piece of land two acres at Trafalgar, remember that? Yes. if you remember that, put up your hand yes. let me see how many of you all have been following the issues of Dominica yeah, I see you <laughs> Mr. Louis, very good night to you, sir <laughs> good to see you but two acres of land he bought it from Skerritt he used his company called Mercury Properties to buy it from Sterry. How much did he pay Sterry for it? The land Sterry got for free. He paid Sterry seven hundred and forty thousand dollars. Seven hundred and forty thousand dollars for the gift Sterry received from Marie A. Schilling Ford. So. Mercury Properties has a residential property, a property that they can build a residence on in Trafalgar, two acres. But he doesn't want to build no residence in Trafalgar. By all means, he wants to build a residence in Mont Daniel. Where? By the farm. The land scarlet told us in this farm. 95,000 square feet farm. 
But in the land of Syria, you buy more land. But the land could be anywhere else. You want the land right next to the farm. That's good. So he, gets, he buys two pieces of land next to each other, right next to the farm. And he builds the mansion. While he's building the mansion, Minister of Government in the cabinet of Roosevelt Square agreed that they would fix up Mount Bruce, the residence of the Prime Minister. At one of the meetings, he wasn't there. He came back and he overturned the cabinet decision. He said, no, we're not building nothing at Mount Bruce. They went back a second time behind his back and they made a decision with moving ahead. He came back, he overturned his cabinet. Again, he don't want no house in Mount Bruce. Because by that time, mansion building. And then, guess who ends up living in the mansion? Guess who ends up living in the mansion? Scared in the mansion. And Dominicans are paying for it $64,000 a month. That is the man who is going to be signing an agreement with Scary tomorrow for the International Airport. Whose fools are we in Dominica? Are we going to be sitting down at home tomorrow? Okay. So, what time are we gathering and where? Where are we gathering? But then I, I want to do business now. Serious business now. People getting serious now. Where are we going to gather tomorrow? Lindo Park. Lindo Park. Tomorrow afternoon, Lindo Park. Bring your placards. We are going down. We're walking down the back road there by the stadium. We're going down by the stadium. We want to be there for free footy. We want to welcome those who come to the stadium of our placard because we do not agree. We, the people of Dominica, gathered here tonight, do not agree. That any contract requiring us to borrow our own money from Anthony Hayden for International Airport will be signed tomorrow. We do not agree. 